So hi and welcome to this Budget Model Railways video on how to wire a DC shunting layout or end-to-end -end layout. I'm making this because we get asked occasionally and in the last week actually we've had three people contact us to say they're really quite, uh, if you like, confused about this. And I'm not surprised because there's, for want of a better word, quite a lot of nonsense spoken about DC wiring of these layouts. And it comes from the fact that if you, a lot of this information that's repeated is about 20 if not 30 years old. When points were really unreliable and you couldn't trust them to transfer the points. I've got a few old Hornby manual points. Sometimes they transfer the power, some they don't. Which meant that things like this had to be isolated. Which meant putting a plastic isolator in here, a wire, a switch that had to go on your, your um, control board. So you physically turned the power on and off to this from your controller, which is quite complicated. However, that really hasn't been the case for decades, particularly with these, which are Pico uh, Insel Frog points. The Hornby ones um, are okay. The only trouble I've got with the Hornby is the frogs are too big, but you can get around that with tinfoil as I have there. But they will still insulate as will these, but with modern insulating points, all this, if you like, uh, nonsense about isolating is really not required. Um, so with a layout like this, where we've got a passing loop, a siding, a siding, and in fact a kickback siding, it's only powered in two places. Now I use these, these are um, fish plate connectors, they've had a wire, you can buy them, um, or you can make them yourself. They're very reliable, they just press on the end of the track and this layer is only wired in two places. So it's wired here and it's wired there. Now this one I've actually soldered, so you can solder it yourself or you can use your fist plates. Simply take the wires and wire them into a connector block. You can see here that I've got two wires in there and two wires in there. Yes, you should color code them. Um, it'd be much better if one of these wires was black, um, but as it happens, uh, this was the wire I had at the time. And with only two wires, it's not that complicated, but if you color code them, it's much simpler. And they then simply run into the two wires from my controller. Now this is all DC that we're talking about here. I'm not gonna get involved in DCC because that's a whole different ball game. Now the only reason we've got power here is because this piece of track won't be powered from the input there. But if you think of power as almost like a running river, the power can run down here, it can run down there, it can run down here, it can run down there, and it can run through the loop. Now if I want to isolate, I simply flick the point. So by flicking that point and that point, this section is isolated. Not that one, because I've got that powered. But this one is, I can isolate that one, and I can isolate this one. Now that means that if I want, I can leave a loco in here and another loco can shunt the passing loop. If I want, I can leave a loco in here, I can leave a loco in there, and I can shunt the passing loop. So I can have three locos on here. Not running all at the same time, that's obviously the DCC advantage, but I don't want to run three locos at a time. It does mean I can hold them. Now if we look, for instance, at my new layout, if you like a more traditional passing loop, two sidings, and a bay platform. Think of the river running. All of this can be powered from just two wires there and there. This is a dead siding. So again, two wires wired in. Now what I can also do, I'm gonna flit around a bit here. I can, if I want, put a little simple cheap on off switch. And if I simply put that in the wire, so I take this wire that comes off there, I put that in, I can then, if I want, using a switch, isolate that as well, so it's not always powered. But that would be just if I wanted a loco in there. If I wanted the bay platform and that one, I don't need to do anything other than just leave all this powered in. If I didn't have this siding, a kickback siding, then the whole rest of that would be powered by two wires. And that would still enable me to have a loco in there, a loco in there, and a loco working the passing loop. And it's that simple. DC, really easy, don't get involved with anything other than insulating points and you can switch all the power just by using your points. I hope that's useful to people. Um, length doesn't matter, so if you had a long fiddle yard that comes into this, if you wire it in the right place, you can power your fiddle yard off of it as well using passing loops. If you're doing an end-to-end, -end, um, you need to think a bit more, but for your shunting layouts, it's that simple. So we hope, hope you found that useful um, and we look forward to talking to you again.
Hi, thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments. Uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series, click on the right for another video you might enjoy and please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment etc. Thanks again.